A small step for man, a giant leap for humanity. NASA, the space agency that has showered us with interesting and exciting space discoveries over the years, has constantly been looking to achieve interplanet travel, particularly to Mars. Recently, NASA unveiled its updated Moon to Mars objectives, laying the groundwork for the future of space travel. And here's all that we know about it so far. Let's talk about the Moon to Mars objectives. Earlier this year, the space agency announced on its official website that it had released released a list of 50 draft objectives developed by top officials and urged the public, industry, and foreign partners to share their feedback on the matter. This was followed by workshops held with business and international partners to talk more about the Moon to Mars program. The 63 goals that were ultimately selected show a well-thought-out plan that spread across four main categories, science, transportation, and habitation, lunar and Martian infrastructure, and operations. The agency also added a set of recurring tenants to address themes that were present in many of the goals. In a statement released by the U.S. Space Agency, NASA Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy said that the objectives are both realistic and ambitious. She also said that she was happy with how the workforce, industry, and partners have helped shape the future of space exploration together with NASA. Melroy said, we need a plan that will last, and through a collaborative process, we've come up with a core set of clear objectives to help us achieve our exploration goals with our partners. NASA's Artemis project has a goal of exploring more of the moon than ever before. Now that Artemis the first is ready for launch, the agency wants to send people back to the moon and set up a regular schedule of missions, including one to the south polar region of the moon. These missions set up a long-term presence that will help with future exploration of Mars and other faraway places. Next up, let's talk about the candidate landing regions for Artemis. As we know, NASA wants to make space travel more accessible for humans and wants to explore the moon more extensively. Senior leaders at NASA started working on the objectives in November 2021 with coordination from the agency Cross Directorate Federated Board. Their goal is to make sure that NASA's focus is aligned with the same strategic goals and direction for all of its mission directorates. NASA will be able to look for ways that the goals of the United States and other countries for exploring the moon and Mars match up, as well as possible ways to work together. The agency wants to send humans back to the moon and set up a regular schedule of missions, including one to the south polar region of the moon. NASA has identified 13 potential landing sites near the moon's south pole for the Artemis III mission, which will be the first human expedition to the moon's surface since 1972. These missions set up a long-term presence that will help with future exploration of Mars and other faraway places. In May of 2022, NASA released a draft of its high-level objectives to the public and its own employees. The space agency agency has asked for comments by June 2022 at the latest. After receiving more than 5,000 suggestions, NASA refined some plans and added others. NASA's Associate Administrator for the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, Jim Free, said, We are helping to guide humanity's global move into deep space. With Artemis I to launch on the 27th of September 2022, what could this mean for humankind moving forward? Moving on to the future of humankind in deep space. Jim Free is also in charge of NASA's Moon to Mars architecture. He said, the objectives will help make sure that a long-term plan for exploring the solar system can keep its focus even as politics and funding change. This will help give clear direction as new technologies, vehicles, and parts are made over the next few years and are meant to be attainable. The Artemis campaign is all about representing the Mars mission's preparations and the capabilities and procedures necessary to carry out risk-free deep space science and exploration missions on the moon. The Artemis mission's primary focus is on scientific research and development, alongside important exploration technology objectives. After the successful launch of Artemis I this year, NASA plans to send humans back to the moon no sooner than 2024 with the Artemis II mission, and then in 2025 with the Artemis III mission to land on the lunar surface. A portion of Artemis will be used by NASA to evaluate Mars transportation concepts and systems. The agency's long-term presence on the surface of the moon will serve as a bridge between the moon and the subsequent Mars campaign. 
Kurt Vogel, director of space architecture in the office of the NASA administrator, said, We wanted to create objectives to guide the next missions. Instead of prioritizing the construction of campaign support pieces and capabilities, this method reverses the order. We now have campaigns being developed and the technology developing to back those campaigns. The community's suggestions were also of incredible value. And now NASA is prepared to take the next step in the architectural design process. Moving on, let's talk about the return of humans to the moon, the Artemis program. Even though the goal is to send humans back to the moon, the Artemis missions won't be anything like the Apollo missions. The 1960s and 1970s moon landings started the space age a little too early, in some opinions. Just 12 years after the first satellite, Sputnik, was launched, people were sent to the moon. The Apollo missions were based on geopolitics and the United States' desire to get ahead of the Soviet Union in space technology. The Soviet Union had already sent the first satellite into space, the first spacecraft to crash on the moon's surface, and the first astronaut into space. And the United States wanted to get ahead of them. But the Artemis missions can take advantage of the significant developments in space technology over time. However, not everything on the list of objectives would happen on the first expedition. But the sheer fact that they are doable at all makes human landings on the moon of greater significance than they were before. Moving on to other news, we have Neptune, and it's shining in recent photos. NASA recently unveiled fresh James Webb Space Telescope images of our solar system's farthest planet. Seven of Neptune's 14 moons are visible in the images, as are the planet's narrow rings and its faint dust band, which have never before been spotted in the infrared. The $10 billion James Webb Telescope, which was launched less than a year ago, is devoting most of its time to investigating regions of the cosmos further away from our own. At the points where the earliest stars and galaxies were formed, virtually all astronomers wish to look at the beginning of time. During a flyby in 1989, NASA's Voyager 2 was the first spacecraft to see Neptune in all its gaseous glory. The icy blue planet has never been seen by any other spacecraft before Webb. Although Webb has been phenomenal in terms of its observations, NASA has reported signs of increased friction on one of Webb's mechanisms. Let's hope James Webb is functioning well for the events in our next news. Next up, we have the historic DART asteroid impact. NASA's DART mission will crash into an asteroid called Diamorphos in near future, and three science spacecraft will try to capture the crash. The double asteroid redirection test, DART mission, is meant to test a way to protect the Earth if there's a big asteroid heading straight for it. The dinosaurs would have found it really handy. The spacecraft will carry a tiny CubeSat to record its dramatic end. The James Webb and Hubble Space Telescopes and another NASA mission called Lucy will also try to observe the impact. At a press conference on September 12th, Nancy Chabot, the coordination lead for DART, said, This is a unique opportunity and a unique moment to take all the resources that we can possibly maximize what we'd learn. DART was launched in November 2021, bound for the asteroid Dimorphos. Scientists are eager to observe the impact to figure out what the future of defense against asteroids might look like for Earth. Speaking of asteroids, next up, we have a massive asteroid heading towards Earth. NASA's OSIRIS-REx was sent to a faraway asteroid named Bennu to collect samples. It is expected to bring the samples to NASA on September 24, 2023, when it comes close to Earth, just to go on a new mission to study a near-Earth asteroid that has the potential to destroy our planet. NASA says that the Apophis asteroid is very big and could be dangerous. Apophis is thought to be about 1,100 feet cross, which is about the same height as the Empire State Building in Manhattan, New York. On April 13, 2029, it will be just 23,000 miles away from Earth. During that close pass, some places on Earth will be able to see it with the naked eye. Yikes! Let's hope the DART mission is ready when the time comes. That's it for this video. We're curious to see what's next for humankind in deep space, but we're more curious to know your thoughts. Make sure to leave them in the comments below, and we'll be back with more videos like this. Make sure to subscribe and press that notification bell so you don't miss out. Take care and goodbye.